It's 2,000 points of Orc and Goblin Tribes versus 2,000 points of Vampire Counts in the game of Warhammer, the Old World. This is Toe in 20 minutes. It's just like play on tabletop if you ordered it on Wish. The Vampire General, Draco Harkon, has deployed five undead dogs who died from rabies, and beside the rabid dogs are their former owners who were bitten by them. A flock of six felbats join the undead horde with more irresponsible dog owners. An ethereal wraith leads a unit of spear-wielding skeletons, and next to them enters a woman named Karen, demanding that she speak to the general. Thirty graveguard carrying the banner of Drakenhof, giving them a five-up regen save march onto the field. I mean, look at that freehand paint job. It has to be a magic banner. A necromancer accompanies the tortured souls of some Age of Sigmar players who are being forced to play the old world against their will. And behind them, General Draco rides a monster. It's from the Abyss. It's terrifying. It's the Abyssal Terror. But really, it's just like a wyvern, but worse. It's kind of like when you ask your mum for a wyvern and she says, but we have a wyvern at home. Next is a unit of Limehammer Skeletons, because why choose two ranks when you can have ten attacks? And finally, a unit of ten more pet owners who didn't get their dogs vaccinated. On the orc side, five muscular green plant-based men ride to battle on some bacon and sausages. I, uh, I haven't eaten today. Beside them are a mob of 17 orcs and a giant who forgot why he came here in the first place. Two goblins who can't stand each other named Steve and Bob operate a bolt thrower, while next to them a prick of an orc cracks the whip on some overworked underpaid goblins who still don't know what a union is. Some black orcs, who prefer the term orcs of colour, march onto the field next to the general who rides a wyvern. It's really just an abyssal terror, but better. Some goblins who are high on spider venom think that launching themselves from a catapult is a good idea. And beside them we have 40 orc boys because... <laughs> Which reminds me, they are led by the battle standard bearer, an orc big boss who carries the WAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
and he called me a wuss. Karen floats forward in anger, and the wraith leads the skeletons onwards. The irresponsible pet owners stumble ahead, accompanied by their rabid dogs, and the fell bats fly to the side of the woods. The ghouls at the other end follow their dogs, egging them on. The shooting phase. The necromancer tries to cast Spiritual Vortex, but fails. So he goes with something easier. He casts Unquiet Spirits, and it goes off. Spectres rip and tear into the orcs with 13 hits, and they kill one. Reminding us that Warhammer the Old World is a dice game. Orc and Goblin Tribes, turn two. The Black Orcs charge into the skirmishes to stop them from entering the woods. The giant completely forgets where he was going, but gets excited when he sees the fell bats. He's always wanted a pet bat, and so he charges off to get one. But the edge of the woods trip him up, and the charge is failed. The 17 boys attempt to charge into the woods, but underestimated how dense the woods actually are. Ain't no trees grow where they're from. That ridiculous thick line of jewel-wielding orcs that we will now refer to as the Green Line. Charge the spirit hosts and just make it. Clipping them. Good thing that clipping isn't cheating anymore. The orc spear-wielding mob are dog lovers and swear to make the ghouls pay for neglecting their own pets. The boar boys march toward the ghouls and the general flies toward the center of the battlefield. The shooting phase. A goblin picks up the ball the dire wolves are fetching and sits on the edge of the rock lobber, admiring his new ball. The rock lobber fires and the goblin gets caught in the rope, sending a heap of guts into the air instead. The ball soars up into the sky and the orc bully who played quarterback in college catches it. A bolt thrower fires into the line of skellies and shatters one of them to bits. The arrow boys assist with a volley of arrows which get two wounds, but to their shock, one of the skellies regenerates. Another goblin volunteers to get launched out of the catapult. He is launched slightly off target, but manages to flap his way back into the rear end of the graveguard, kamikazeing through six of them and destroying none of them making the other divers lined up to be launched question the purpose of their lives. The other rock lobber fires into the grave guard, hitting the edge of the unit, squashing one of them. Regenerate that! The rock rolls over three others and demolishes one of them. Bob fires into the woods at the approaching direwolves, but hits a tree instead. Nice one, Bob. Very nice. I was aiming for the tree, Steve. It was target practice. We had six arrows, Bob. That's all we had. Now we've got four. Why don't you try target practice on the enemy? I hate you. The combat phase. The spear boys strike the irresponsible dog owners and kill off one of them. The ghouls ferociously strike back in anger because how dare the orcs accuse them of that. They love their dogs. They just don't believe in vaccines. And very evidently so. <laughs> In their anger, they kill three of the judgmental orcs, but despite their efforts, they still lose combat res by one and are pushed back as the orcs follow up. My opponent smiles, thinking less base-to-base -base contact means less attacks for me, but she forgot to read the fine print. This isn't 6th edition anymore. All the spirit hosts can attack, getting six hits and four wounds. Being ethereal, the orcs cannot hurt them. But once again, despite our best efforts, they lose combat res by one. And they don't give ground because I forgot to read the fine print. The Black Orcs tear into the ghouls, re-rolling ones because of their choppers, causing four wounds which the ghouls can't regenerate from. In retaliation, the ghouls kill one of them, but because of my favorite rule, combat res, they lose by six and all of them drop dead. Vampire Counts turn to the Graveguard. What could they possibly do here? Hmm. Yep, let's charge the orc line. Would be nice if the graveguard were in a line too, but drill does not mean you get to redress the ranks before making a charge. Disagree? Let's fight in the comments. The wraith and his band of skeletons charge into the black orcs, who are not terrified of a ghost in a dress. The ghouls charge into the boar boy's flank, and the rabid direwolves take advantage of the 17 orcs' failed charge and run into them. The Vampire General declares a charge against the Black Orcs and the Abyssal Terror lives up to its name by terrifying the Black Orc mob, who shit their pants and flee, running straight through the Wyvern, causing a panic test. But the General is not a wuss.
At the end of the battlefield, the direwolves, in an attempt to get that ball, charge into the rock lobber that has half a goblin hanging from its ropes. The fell bats, not wanting to be adopted by a giant, fly through the woods where the giant can't see them. The line of skellies that's longer than the line at Centrelink in Australia wheels to get around a tiny piece of impossible terrain. The necromancer walks forward and so does Karen, which leads us to the shooting phase. Karen introduces herself to the line of orcs. My name is Karen. Karen! Orcs have heard legends of the woman conceived by hell itself, and five of them choose death over dealing with Karen despite the general's presence. General Draco casts unquiet spirits on the Black Orc General. Ghosts claw at the Wyvern and the Warboss, getting three wounds. The Necromancer casts Spiritual Vortex and does so successfully this time, and even fate cannot dispel it. A whirling vortex of dark energy opens up a portal to the realm of Maw, God of Death. Meaning all within eight inches can't use their General's leadership. Maybe I should have used that before the Banshee wailed. The combat phase. The direwolves are too preoccupied with trying to fetch the ball, and so the combat res is a draw. The spear orcs strike into the anti-vax dog owners and cut down one of them while the ghouls double the score and kill two. But combat res tells them to take a hike. The ghouls give ground and the orcs follow up. The graveguard hack into the green line of orcs, and while they're great at hitting, they suck at wounding and only kill one orc. The big boss lashes out and can't even kill a single graveguard because none of them take his banner seriously. The green line swing away with a stupid amount of attacks, hitting with less than half of them and manage to destroy two graveguard. Lastly, the frustrated souls of Age of Sigmar players channel their hatred for square bases into their attacks and tear apart four orcs meaning the ridiculous green line loses combat res by three and must take a break test. Good thing they can use their general's leadership, right? Wrong! The vortex sucks that away as well as their will to fight and they flee. 14 orcs flee through the vortex and five of them are warped into the realm of the god of death. Where they die. Graveguard pursue, but the vortex slows them down just enough to deny them the satisfaction of overrunning. Now because three of them ran through the vortex, we must roll a peril test to decide how many get sucked into the realm of Maw. As long as we don't roll any ones, we're good. It's a dice game. The spirit hosts also pursue but to no avail. The ghouls scratch and sniff the boars doing no damage and so the boar riding champion strikes and also does no damage, making combat res a draw. But an orc blows a horn and the ghouls lose combat res by one. The boars change facing and follow up. Pretty cool that you can do that now. Page 156 of the rulebook. Oh wait, it says turn, not reform. Give us a break, it's our first game. The rabid direwolves bite two of the 17 orcs who start frothing at the mouth and die. The orcs do one wound in return as the other wounded direwolf regenerates. But the same regenerated dog dies anyway because combat. Actually, it should have been two that died because regeneration wounds still count towards combat res. It's our first game. Give us a break. Orc and Goblin Tribes, turn three. The Black Orcs suddenly remember that they are Black Orcs and they love violence. So they rally, ready to return to do what they love most. The line of Orcs, however, are in fact not Black Orcs and they continue crapping themselves and flee a further 12 inches, running through the doomed diving goblins who don't panic, as they volunteered to literally get launched from a catapult. The giant, completely forgetting about the fell bats he wanted to adopt, instead spots some squishy things he can step on. Finally, the orc warboss charges the vampire count to prove who the real wuss is. The arrow boys have a bone to pick with those skeletons, and they fire a volley of arrows into them and shatter a single skeleton. Can the bolt thrower do any more damage? Nope. Can the doom diver aim properly? Nope. Can the rock lover do any damage? Yes, it smashes through three graveguard. Can Bob and Steve's bolt thrower do any damage? Oh my gork, Steve, did you see that? Bullseye, baby. 
They're skirmishers, Bob. They don't have ranks. You wasted another bolt. Urge to kill Steve. Rising. The combat phase. The dire wolves chew apart a goblin as they search for the ball. Once again, it's a draw. With an initiative of 10, the wyvern forces the vampire to watch him whip, watch him nay nay, and misses. The orc warboss attacks. Wait! Let's make this an epic battle. As the two monsters join the fray, their colossal forms clash, their titanic struggle drowned out by the pounding rain and the crackle of lightning in the dark of the sky. In other words, their stomp attacks missed. Draco urges his abyssal terror to give ground, but the orc and his wyvern follow up. The giant slams into the skeletons, excited to pop some bubble wrap and with a strength 10 hit, clobbers a skeleton into non-existence. The skeletons pretend they can wound the giant by rolling dice. The giant then stomps on the skellies with two feet, needing a two to wound. Wow. Surprisingly, the giant loses combat res to the squishy things and gives ground. The 15 orcs attack but fail to wound the direwolves, and the direwolves hit everything and wound nothing, and thus ends the undead life of the rabid dogs. The boar boys slay another rabid ghoul, but the rest of them ferociously bite into two of the boars, passing the rabi curse on to them. Despite this, the ghouls lose combat and three of them crumble to the sacks of flesh that they are. Vampire Counts Turn 3, the strategy phase. The necromancer ends the spiritual vortex. Then he uses Invocation of Neck to bring those three Graveguard back. Now they can say they went to hell and back to join this fight. The movement phase. The spirit hosts declare a charge into the Arrow Boys. The line of skeletons declare a charge into the flank of the spear-wielding orcs. The Wraith and his seemingly unstoppable skelly crew Declare a charge into the Black Orcs. The Felbats declare a charge into the rear of the 15 Orc Boys. Can the line of Skellies charge? They can! First wheel, then move forward until contact, then a free wheel. One passes through the dangerous terrain because line hammer. The spirit hosts fail their charge, but the Wraith and his regiment of Skellies successfully slam into the Black Orcs. But they are not terrified. The Felbats swoop into the rear end of the 15 Orcs. The Necromancer strides forward behind the Graveguard and attempts to summon that same Vortex again. But it seems Maul was offended that he brought three Graveguard back from Hell, and so he's closed his doors for today. Karen floats up beside the Graveguard, angry that the Orcs decided to run from her rather than accommodating her request to speak to the General. As the Graveguard wheel, Karen decides that those Orcs over there look like supervisors, and so demands that they get her the general manager. Get me the manager right now. But these orcs have dealt with many Karens in their lifetime and know the best way to deal with one is to tell her she's overreacting. Combat phase. The direwolves devour two of the goblins of the rock lobber, leaving only the orc bully behind, who is all bark and no bite. He flees five inches, ending up just on the edge of the battlefield. But the direwolves, who still need that ball, rip him apart and carry his remains off the edge. The spear-wielding orcs avenge the unvaccinated direwolves behind them and slay the ghast, but did not expect the overwhelming power of Lionhammer. The orcs attack back with ones and twos, losing combat res and breaking. They love rolling ones so much that their flea is two inches. All the skeletons need is a three. You can't make this shit up. The epic battle of the generals continues. The wyvern attacks with its tail, miss. The abyssal terror attacks with its tail, miss. The blork warboss makes four attacks, gets three hits but no wounds. Draco mimics his opponent's results. The wyvern attacks with its claws, hits once but gets no wounds. The abyssal terror attacks with its claws and finally wounds the black orc warboss, piercing through his armor which the troll trousers can't regenerate. Perhaps because the wound was on his face and not his leg. The Wyvern and the Abyssal Terror do their stomp attacks and the Wyvern cops another wound and takes a flying kick to the face, leaving the Orc Warboss with two wounds remaining. He takes a break test but passes and gives ground. 
The fell bats attack the 15 orcs, needing fours to hit. It's a dice game. The orcs attack back, also getting zero wounds. The boars impale a single ghoul while their riders cause another two wounds, but one ghoul regenerates. The ghouls fail to get any hits back and lose combat res, crumbling by one, leaving only three left. The skeletons attack the black orcs, hitting three of them and actually killing one of them. The wraith, who should have attacked first, but it doesn't make a difference anyway, slashes into the black orcs and kills another black orc. The blocks strike back, hitting four times and wounding twice, but only killing one skeleton. Against all odds, the skellies win combat and push the black orcs back. Orc and Goblin Tribes turn four. The strategy phase. The line of orcs manages to rally despite the uninspiring artwork on the battle standard. The movement phase. The giant completely forgets about his obsession with skeletal bubble wrap and decides he wants to play with the demented winged pony instead. The doom diver shuffles sideways to make way for line hammer. Fire! Fire! The last rock lobber takes aim at the grave guard, but the rock is far too heavy to launch, so the crew take the entire turn, pushing the rock off. I can see the guys with the pretty flag. That's great, Bob. If only you could shoot. I was warming up, Steve. Now watch this. Congrats, Bob. You got one out of four. You know what, Steve? I think you'd be a great doom diver. The combat phase. Let's keep this one nice and simple. The giant body slams the vampire and his steed, causing a single wound, which makes Draco give ground and lose one wound to combat res, which would have been three, but no, he is indomitable. I like this new rule. The Black Hawk mob cleaves through four skeletons, the most casualties this regiment has taken in a single turn. The Wraith hacks into the blocks in anger, avenging his fallen minions by slaying three of them who don't get a save against his spectral sight. The second rank of skellies on roids and the champion stab into the blocks and wounding on every hit. Arm into the teeth, the spears clang off three of the blocks and one of them takes it through the neck. The Black Orcs lose combat again, but they love violence more than life itself and give ground. The skeletons pass a leadership test and restrain. On the other side of the woods, a battle continues. The last remaining ghast lashes out aimlessly and suddenly crumbles, losing combat by one. Vampire counts turn four, the strategy phase. The dire wolves return with the ball, a successful game of fetch indeed. The necromancer attempts an invocation of Nehek's special rule, but he fails to do it. He has one job in life and he sucks at it. The movement phase. Spirit hosts charge the arrow boys, the skeletons charge back into the black orcs, and the grave guard charge the orc war boss. And Karen finally sees the general manager and charges into him with such unimaginable rage, for none of her demands have been met in four turns. Four! That number's higher than the amount of people that would be excited for a new Stormcast Eternal starter box. That stupid looking line of skeletons reforms and the direwolves run through the battlefield. The Necromancer strides forward and casts unquiet spirits on the Doom Diver crew, summoning ghosts who slaughter the entire crew. The Necromancer becomes cocky after wiping out some goblins and tries to summon the portal to the realm of Moor again. But miscasts in his arrogance and the magic explodes all around him. But he comes out of it unscathed. Karen unleashes her frustrations out on the general with a wailing dirge. I know a hundred people who would do this job much better than you. So annoying is the sound of her high-pitched rant that the war boss embraces death as an escape from the abyssal witch. The orc general is dead. Death by Karen. The spirit hosts attack. Wow. They roll wounds. Wow. Fate punishes the spirit hosts for sucking at rolling dice with a single combat res wound. On the other side of the battlefield, the fellbats strike the 14 orcs, getting no wounds. 
The Orcs strike back and kill an already wounded Felbat who lose combat res yet again. The Wraith turns out to be a one-hit wonder as he fails to wound any Black Orcs. The Skeletons, however, who injected creatine into their bone marrow, stick the spears through the eye holes of two Black Orcs. The Black Orcs hack back through the Skeletal Horde but only slay a single Skeleton. Embarrassed and disgraced for losing combat three times to Skeletons, the last five Black Orcs flee, deciding to spend the rest of their days tiptoeing through the tulips. As they hold hands and skip off into the sunset, the skeletons run them down, charging straight into the last rock lobber. The orc bully's leadership encourages the crew to hold firm. Orc and goblin tribes turn five. The war boss may be dead, but the big boss is still here. His enemies may not take his battle standard seriously, but that won't change the- yeah! Being just out of range, the unit has an extra 3 inch charge range and can move an extra d3 inches and so the lion charges into the flank of the graveguard for their revenge. The last three ball boys turn to the left and abandon their rock friends. There's 14 of you and 3 of them, you'll be right boys. The combat phase. With the orc war boss defeated by the world's worst Karen, the abyssal terror strikes the giant with its tail but misses. The vampire follows through with a flurry of strikes but is unable to wound. The Abyssal Terror slashes with its claws, but the giant thinks it's just playing. This giant is unkillable. So the giant decides to play too. It raises its club high over its head and pummels the vampire count and his steed into the ground, causing five wounds. Draco regenerates three of those, leaving the vampire count on his last. The Wraith decapitates a goblin with ease while his skeletons create two goblin kebabs. At the edge of the woods, the 14 orcs wound a fell bat, but it quickly regenerates. The bats ferociously bite into the orcs, killing two of them, bringing their number down to 12. Losing combat res by one, the orcs cry, WAAAAAAA, but in fear this time, and flee. The fell bats cut them down and bring their number from 12 to zero, and then they charge into the flank of the convoy of orc boys, who just a moment ago said, There's 14 of you and three of them. You'll be right, boys. Orc Big Boss attempts to inspire his orc boys, but misses every attack. The Green Lion sends 19 attacks into the Grave Guard, scoring 10 hits and wounding five times. They slash through the Grave Guard's armor, destroying three of them as one regenerates. The Grave Guard retaliate with three hits and two orcs fall to their blades. The magic animating the Grave Guard dissipates, and three of them bite the dust as they get pushed back. The big boss orders the green line to restrain so they can charge again in the final turn. Vampire counts turn 5, the strategy phase. The necromancer tries to bring back some grave guard but couldn't use his own special rule if unnatural lives depended on it. The seemingly invincible Gigachad skeletons reform. The direwolves, unable to find their owners, decide to see if the goblin bolt thrower operators want to play a game of rip tear kill. The line of skeletons head over to help their ghostly friends, and the necromancer gives some distance between himself and the fray. He stares down the green line and smirks. He casts Unquiet Spirits, which fate allows this turn, and summons the spirit of the members of the Warhammer Fantasy 6th Edition Facebook group, who despise the concept of Lionhammer, led by Dr. Blacksill. Hello, punks! The veteran wargamers hack their way through the green line with such passion that they kill two orcs. The dire wolves eat a goblin alive and the other two crew members fall back in good order as the wolves pursue. The spirit hosts devour the souls of two arrow boys and being unable to attack a ghost, they flee. Straight through the dire wolves and one arrow boy gets his face munched off by an undead puppy. The abyssal terror whips the giant with its venomous tail, finally wounding the behemoth. The vampire getting desperate viciously attacks into the giant's chest, rolling the number of the beast to wound, bringing the giant down to its last two wounds. The giant roars in agony and swings its club, but the Abyssal Terror ducks. In retaliation, the Abyssal Terror launches itself at the giant and pierces its hide, leaving the giant on its last wound. I don't want to play with you anymore. Orc and Goblin Tribes turn 6. The Arrow Boys do what Orcish ranged units do best and flee off the battlefield. 
The Green Lion charges back into the Graveguard, gaining the advantage in the final combat. The Three Stooges declare a charge on the Vampire General because why not? It's turn six and they make the charge. Bob and Steve, the last War Machine operators on the field, discuss who they should fire at next. Steve, I can't shoot anything. I might hit an orc. You can shoot anywhere, Bob. You have 360 degrees of vision. Come on, Steve. It's not like anything would be coming from behind. Oh, crap. Turn it around, Bob. I'm Faster. Trying. I'm Turn trying. it. I did it, Steve. I got four of them. Cool, Bob. Very cool. You do know there's still ten of them, right? Just let me have this moment, Steve. The direwolves finish playing their little game of rip, tear, kill with the goblins. The Green Lion throws 19 attacks into the last 10 Grave Guards, and from 19 attacks, they wound 7 of them. Three of them deflect the blows with their shields, and another three of them regenerate, meaning that from 19 attacks, the Orcs kill... one. I'm beginning to think that Lionhammer might not actually be a problem. Dice, however. The Grave Guard return the favor and also kill a total of one. Combat res and a badly painted battle standard mean that four Grave Guard crumble to ash. The Abyssal Terror's tail strikes the giant, but the behemoth isn't phased. The standard bearer and his boar strike the vampire together. The rider hits and wounds the beast and his boar smashes into the vampire's mount. Luckily, the vampire has a four up armor save. Well, one wound goes through. Luckily, the vampire has a five up regen save. A pig has just killed the Vampire General. Not just killed, overrun. And just like that, the Boar Boys Command are promoted from the Three Stooges and become known as the Three Boar Men of the Apocalypse. The magic holding the army together rapidly fades and the entire army will start to crumble except for the Necromancer. How's the Banshee doing? Very well. How's the Graveguard holding up? Not too bad. How's the line of skeletons? Perfection. How's the spirit host doing? Surprisingly well. How's the direwolves doing? What direwolves? How's the wraith and his skellies doing? Giga chads. Vampire counts turn six. Start of turn, we must do all of those tests again. We forgot to roll for the Felbats last turn, but it doesn't matter anyway. The line of skeletons begins to crumble as the magic animus dissipates. The spirit hosts. Oh, that is bad. The AOS players really don't want to be here anymore. The abnormally strong skeletons finally start to break as one of them collapses. Karen isn't going anywhere. She's always there, always watching, waiting for something to wail about. The graveguard, however, all suddenly collapse, making the green lion let out a victorious war cry. The wraith and his roid boys charge into Bob and Steve. I guess this is the end, Steve. I guess it is, Bob. I never thought I'd die fighting side by side with a goblin. How about fighting side by side with a friend? I, I could do that. Too bad you're not my friend. I hate you. The necromancer realizes he and Karen are the last hope of the vampire counts. Desperate times call for desperate measures and the necromancer attempts to cast a difficult spell and it goes off. It is fate! A portal to the realm of Moor, God of Death, opens up once more. Right on top of the green line, striking fear into their hearts. Next, he casts Unquiet Spirits and the veteran Warhammer Fantasy players return. They kill five orcs. Thinking quickly, the necromancer calls out to Karen and informs her that the orcs said She's overreacting. How dare you talk back to me? I am, I am the, the consumer. consumer! Using well over 25% of their unit in one phase, they roll a panic test. The line of now seven orcs holds firm. What happens next? Do the undead come with the dust? Does the giant remember why it was there at all? No one knows. It was never recorded in history. All we have are the war trophies to determine who won this fight. It's a draw.